All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm Kyle, your host. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt, who's back from his hiatus last episode. So, Matt, great to see you back. Thanks for having me, Kyle. <laughs> I appreciate the invite. Well, you know, Matt, you're okay. But who I'm really excited about talking tonight is Coach Jeff Smothers from Tombs County. Coach, welcome on the show. We're excited to have you on. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, appreciate it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Absolutely. Um, and so... Tonight, Coach, we're going to talk about a couple different topics with you. I'm super excited about the first topic. Um, it is transitioning from a head coach to a coordinator, which is something that very rarely is talked about, something that me and Matt have both done, and something that, to be honest with you, I probably need to listen to your talk before I did. So I'm excited to go ahead and take a lot of notes tonight, and maybe the next time somebody graces me with the gift of coaching, I can take all of this to heart. So, Coach, welcome on the show. I'm going to go ahead and give you the reins and we can get kicked off with going from a head coach to a coordinator. All right. Well, first off, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, I think it's, it's very important for our game, uh, for the advancement of our game. Um, talking about <clears throat> the, the new age of football and trying to advance it in the right way. Uh, football is you know, evolving every day. Uh, just in the last five, 10 years, you've seen, seen a big change in how practices are ran and um, how, how the game is played. But in the end, you can still play physical football and, and still still play hard and, and do those things without being out there for four hours and playing, doing Oklahoma over and over again. Um, and I think that, you know, podcasts like this are a great opportunity to kind of get out there and show, you know, talk, get different different aspects of it, get different coaches on here and talk about how they do things and, and better the game for the better of the game. Absolutely, Coach. And we appreciate the kind words. And. Um, just like coach said, you know, if you're a coach that's out there that has something great to share and you want to come on the show, just DM us and let us know. We are uh, trying to do 52 coaches in 52 weeks. Uh, we started in December, uh, but obviously the 52 weeks is for 2024. So we're off to a good start. We, me and Matt, uh, kind of got caught up there. We got real close to the mark of missing an episode this Wednesday, uh, but we slid it in just underneath the wire. So we're excited about it. Um, coach, I'm going to go ahead and share your first piece here and you can go ahead and kick us off for us. Right. It was the be where your feet are. Correct. Yep. Yep. All right. So, you know, coming from being a head coach to a coordinator, you know, my, my goal growing, you know, growing in the coaching, coaching game was when I was a young coach, my whole mindset was I got to become a head coach. I got to become a head coach. I got to become a head coach as a lot of us are. Um, and I think that, you know, something that, you know, I've really learned over time is um, the importance of being where your feet are. Um, I think that, you know, in in any any job, any career, you you know, you want to be the best. You want to you want to perform at a high level, uh, whatever you're doing, and you want to make it to the top. That's how I am. I'm a competitor in everything I do. My kids know that if we're playing checkers, I'm, I'm dominating my eight year old. You know, it just it's, it is what it is. <laughs> it's, it's nothing personal. It's business. But um, if I'm, if I'm, you know, at practice, the boys know I'm, I'm bringing it every day. I'm bringing that energy. Um, but the, the overall aspect of being, having a title doesn't necessarily demonstrate what, what a good coach is. Right. No doubt. Um, I think that there's so many, there, you know, there's so many coaches out there that you maybe have never been a head coach, but could have been, but they just, they're, they're happy where they are and they're happy in what they do. Um, and something that, you know, I learned um, going through it was, you know, when you're a head coach, you know, you, you work for it, you work for it, you work for it, you get there. And then the work is what it what you think it is. It's you got there's a whole lot more to it than coaching a position or coaching a, um, a defensive room or an offensive room. It's, you know, you're dealing with parents, you're dealing with media, you're dealing with, you know, money, you're dealing with meals you're dealing you know there's there's just so much that goes into it that i think sometimes you lose what the whole purpose of you getting there was and uh that's why we, you know we talked about topics it to me is something that that's really struck me recently um yeah. being, here, being here for this one year and and it's kind of taking a step back um i'm at tombs county high school now in lyons georgia um we played to the elite eight last year finished 11 and 2 um, the two teams we lost to were the two teams in the state championship. Um, you know, the crazy thing is I've never been a part of this, 
and I was in Florida for nine years. So you think that I've seen all the crazy, but um, we actually, uh, we were co-region champs with two other teams. Wow. Uh, at one point in the season, we were ranked one, two, and three in the state. Oh, gosh. We, we literally broke every tiebreaker you could break last year. Um, head to head, we beat one team by three. They beat that team by three, and that team beat the other one by three. And then the margin <laughs> of victory had to be 13 points. That was the cutoff, right? It doesn't matter how much you win by. Well, we all beat every other region opponent by more than 13. So we all got a region title claim, but the position in the playoffs came down to a hat draw. Um, so we, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We we pulled the two seed, and the two seed was not an easy road, but uh, we still sh- should have won it. But in the end, you know, we, we beat Thompson and made it to the third round and ended up coming up short against Rockmark. But um, any, anyways, it's it's one of those things where it's like, being a head coach and being a coordinator, if you're in the right right position, it, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, uh, you know, better and the better best situation looks different for each person. Um, it, like I said before, if you're a coordinator out there uh, and you're striving to be a head coach, go for it. I'm not in any way telling you to shoot down your dreams. I I have those. I still have those dreams and aspirations. I, I want to be a head coach again one day, but no longer am I out there living for that. Yeah. You know? And and it's so easy to get caught up in that, um, to look on the job boards every day and every off season, you're like, man, maybe what about this job? What about that job? Man, I could win there. I could do this, you know? And, and then you, when you take a step back and you just realize like, man, I take that job. Guess what? Now my family's moving. Now I'm hiring a staff. Now I'm dealing with new, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that comes along with that. Um, so, you know, being in the best situation where you are is very important. And just understanding your role um, and being where you are and enjoying it, just enjoying the moment, um, not getting too worried about, you know, when you're a head coach, it's it's a lot. You, you want to be you want to be the best. And a lot goes into that. So as a coordinator, now it kind of you take a step back. Now I can say, OK, now my defense is going to be the best I can be. Yeah, um, I don't necessarily have to deal with all the other stuff. And uh and to me, that's been it's been refreshing in a way um, to make it just help me look at the aspect of what am I doing this for? I'm doing this for the, the kids, the relationships, the building, the overall knowledge of the game and creating a an avenue for future coaches and future players to to excel in the sport that we love. Um, there's no other sport out there like like the sport of football, man. Nothing. You can't you can't you can't mimic it. Basketball, baseball. I played it all. Um, there's nothing like football. There's nothing like it. Um, just the the team aspect. If one guy doesn't do his job, the play doesn't work. You know what I mean? It's just, it, especially on defense, and, and especially in today's game. If, oh yeah. If one, one guy out of position, man. It's it's going to get ugly. So um, I think it's it's important that you know understanding your situation and 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 just thriving in it and enjoying where you're at. Um, and I think that you know iron sharpens iron. I think it's um, it's it's very important to have great guys around you. Um, I was blessed at at Deltona. Um, I was a head coach at Deltona High School in Florida for the last three years before this past season at Toombs County. Um, you know, it's not been known for. We were kind of talking about that a little bit. Deltona's not been known for success in football before we got there. I think they had two winning seasons in 31 years. Um, our first year there, we won the first playoff game in school history. You know, we have my That's last awesome. year, we go seven and three and score over 400 points. Um, it's just, it's something that, you know, if you've got the right guys in the building and you're, and you guys are all on the same page and you're about the kids, you can do anything. Um, but having the right staff is huge. You know, I had, I had two head coaches on my staff, former head coaches. Uh, both my coordinators were were former head coaches and in Florida that's you don't you don't get that very often. Correct, yeah. A lot of time you're just piecing together community guys and you know maybe guys that you coach with here and there but it's nothing like Georgia, man. That's one thing I'll say is um up here it's 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 professional. Like you got prof- I, I call it professional coaches. You got everybody's in the building, everybody they you know they they're locked in like right now we have four guys on staff that have been head coaches. We have six guys that have been coordinators and we got 
others that could be. So it's, you know, you look at it in that aspect and it's like, man, every day I come to work, I'm getting my, I'm getting sharpened. My, my toolbox is getting better because if I don't bring it, I know I'm going to get exposed. Um, and it, it yeah. Just, so Matt, maybe that was your problem. You hired me instead of a much better coach that could have sharpened the irons. So that's, that's probably where you fell short. Wasn't my first mistake, but yeah. <laughs> No, hiring me a second time was your second mistake. So the first mistake, mistake was the first time. The yeah. second mistake was the second time hiring me. So <clears throat> it's a double whammy there, Matt. So well, as he, yeah. as as coach said, it can be tough to to find the staff and find those pieces. It's not easy in Florida to find those guys. It's not easy to find the professionalism that you see in Georgia. But you know, a lot of it is too. My coach did. You know, a lot of good coaches are going to Georgia. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's it's one of those things where it's, you know, iron sharpens iron. I want to be around the best. And um, coming here, <laughs> you know, you're surrounded by that. And But it goes back to, you know, not to get on a whole nother kick of Florida. I'm not trying to bash Florida FHSA today or nothing. But hey, um, you're good. <laughs> just the, the, overall, uh, the overall, you know, supplements and resources. And, yeah. You know, we feed our kids three days a week and, you know, or four days a week during the season. And, um you know, they're always taken care of and, but it, you got stipends, you got guys that are, it's worth coming in the building. Yeah. I, mean, I you know, Florida, I had four stipends man, for my whole staff and stipend is like not a stipend. Yeah. You know? It's like 1200 <laughs> bucks. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I had to split my stipends just to fill us, you know, so yeah. it's, it's just, you guys know you were in Volusia County. It's just, it's one of those things where you really got to work. You're painting the field, you're doing all that. And, and, and here we don't, you don't have to worry about that, but it doesn't change the work ethic, right? Now I can focus more on ball. I don't have to focus on painting my practice field, my game field, my, you know what I'm saying? Having everything you had to do on your own, it felt like in Florida when, or as a head coach, when here, um, you, you piece together a staff, you get guys that are getting taken care of financially, they're going to do more. It's just yeah. that's how the game works. Um, but we, we have a great staff, man. I'm, I'm blessed. Um, I'm, Buddy Martin's our head coach. This was his first year here at, as a head coach. He was the coordinator here for seven years. Um, before that, he was at Hardy County. With, and that's where he hired me to Florida from Kentucky. I, I coached two years in Kentucky and then moved down to Florida. And I was his DB coach for two years. And he left me. And I was like, well, now what? I ended up staying at Hardy. Uh, for four more years and then going to Deltona, but we always stayed in touch. He was always, a, he's always been a mentor to me. Um, great man of faith, does things the right way in every aspect. And um, when he got the job, he gave me a call and it was, it was a wrap from there. Um, yeah. So it, it's a blessing. And, and that, le that leads me to my next point being here in, in Lyons, Georgia, um, being somewhere where you can grow as a person and a coach. Um, I think that's huge when you talk about not worrying about the titles, right? We talked about not worrying about being a head coach, just focusing on where your feet are. Um, and, and being somewhere where you can grow is not only as a coach, as we talked about with having the guys that are coordinators in the building, and having the resources and all that, but it's also as a person. Um, I'm around godly men every day. Um, we do dog checks on the daily, like with our, with our guys. And it's, it's not, we're not forcing scripture down their throat, but we're, we're bringing it to them. That might be the only time they hear the word at all throughout the whole week. Right. Yeah. They don't know what, exactly what these kids are doing, but to me, to me, that's part of my job as a coach is to be a disciple and, and to make sure that I'm, I'm doing my part in that aspect. And, and our whole staff is built like that. Um, coach Martin's done a great job with, with getting guys in the building that care genuinely care about the kids i've never i've never been around a place um where they care so much about the kids and and the community is awesome as well and that's another part of it as a coach you know community is is huge and i you know i never really i mean i've, I've been around good communities i've been around i've you know i've coached at some good places hardy county in florida has a, has a good good group of you know community that supports and not so much in, in Volusia County, but we, we started to get it going in Deltona. But, uh, you know, I got here and we had our first game at the pit, man. And it, they, they all warned me. They're like, man, you've never been at the pit. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what it is. You don't know. And I got here and, man, they weren't lying. Um, you know, it's it's sold out every week, man. You know, 
they sh literally shut the town down. Um, you hear the old Friday night lights, like we are Friday night lights here in, in Lyons, Georgia, and it's it's awesome. Um, so to me, as a head coach, coordinator, DB coach, whatever, you know, it's that that to me that part of it just is awesome, and and it's it's awesome for the kids, it's awesome for the the guys in the building that work so hard every day um, to get that result on Friday night to have to have the fans packed out. And yeah, we were good this year, and it, it you draw a little bit bigger crowd when you're good. Um, but you know, I, I tell you this: I've seen huddle videos from years ago where they were five and five, six and four, whatever, and it's the same amount of people in the stand. <laughs> so I think community is huge. I think it's big, and and choosing that is is to me is more important than a title. Um, the title comes and goes, you know. Um, you know, in your gravestone when you pass that that dash in the middle. What's what's that going to represent? Is it going to say I was head coach at this many schools for this many years, or is it going to say, man, he was a great guy and he he took care of me. He was a great coach. He he taught me the right way to live and the right way to do things. And I think that's more important. So being around people like that makes a big difference. Um, family is is something that's huge to me. I'm I'm married. I got three kids now, um, eight, five, and one. So my house is. It's very fun. Crazy, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's good times. Uh, I'm, I try to savor it as much as I can because <laughs> everybody always tells me, man, when they get older, you'll look back. I'm like, well, it ain't feeling that way right now, but <laughs> some days, oh, yeah. some days are harder than others. But um, it's, it's, you know, my they this community has has taken my family in, man, from the day I got here, and um, that's there's you can't you cannot replace that. Um, there's, you know, having that bond and having that, that those ties and um, everybody wearing the tombs gear on Fridays to go because everybody's going to be at the game. You know, it's just it's awesome. It's an awesome experience. And, and and I think that more coaches, when you're looking for jobs, should take that into account. Um, if If you're a young coach out there, you're looking to take another job or possibly get a opportunity, whether it's assistant, head coach, doesn't matter. Um, investigate that stuff, research that stuff. Cause it, you know, you put in a lot of hours to this thing, man. We, we dedicate our, to our craft, you know? Um, so it's, it's very rewarding to have support. And I think that's, that's something that's huge. It's huge. <clears throat> and um, with, when you're talking about being where your feet are, right. The, I think the number one, Number one aspect of, of being where your feet are is do not get distracted with other jobs. That to, it's it's the hardest thing in our profession. I, I'm I'm around coaches. You guys are coaches. You know the deal. It it is. It's it's the hardest thing. There's every job board out there, whether it's Florida, Georgia, wherever you're looking, they're out there, right? You're the football there. scoop, right? Yeah, old football <laughs> scoop. Maybe that's how I ended up in Florida to begin with. Um, yeah. So it's like. You, you, there's always going to be opportunities, right? I mean, there, if if you if you're a football coach and and you you know what you're doing and you build a halfway decent resume, you're going to be able to coach somewhere. I mean, yeah. there's a job out there, but you know, distracting yourself is it's only going to take away from what you're doing in the building, wherever you are, and that's in the end is just going to hurt you. You want to you want to be the best at what you are, best. At, that's whether I'm a DB coach, whether I'm a quarterbacks coach, I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm a head coach. Um, I think it's 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 huge to just be where your feet are and and focus on the now. Um, you know, I've coached both sides of the ball. I've been a head coach. I've been a court, offensive coordinator, head coach, defensive coordinator now. And in the end, when I those years where I was thinking about another job or maybe going here. It was stressful, man. I look back at it, I'm like, man, why was I stressing myself out so much when if I, I've just been where I was at and enjoyed it, um, I would I enjoyed it, but I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Instead yeah. of thinking, man, we got the best offense in 5A this year. Man, I could get a job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just, oh, kind yeah. of, it's, and it's natural. It's, it's a natural thing as, as a human. It's the flesh. You want to be the best at everything. You want to, you know, make it about you. But in the end, you're not even out there. It's the kids out there, right? So. You gotta, you gotta make sure that you know you're making the right decision for your family, not not worry about <clears throat> everything else, and then the rest will work itself out. 
the rest will work itself out. And that's that's part of trust in the process. Um, just enjoying enjoying where you are, believing in what you're doing, and you know that in the end, if something if something's meant to be, God will put it, God will put it where you're supposed to be. God will put you where you're supposed to be. So I think that, you know, having having the opportunity to kind of work my way through and all my mindset was was head coach, head coach, head coach, head coach. Then I got there and I enjoyed it. I you know, we did a really good job at, at, at maximizing what we had at Deltona. But um now that I've stepped back, it, it makes me appreciate the love the love of the game. I don't yeah. forget the first day I came back you know, when I got to Tombs and I was I was just an assistant. I'm just looking around like Coach Martin's running the meeting room. Coach Dave's is running the, the strength and conditioning. And I'm just looking around like, man, like, I don't know. When when we got defense, like <laughs> it was it was kind of a good feeling to to know that like okay now I can really hone in on what I'm doing and just just focus on you know um, who's who's going to give me the best best eleven I can get out there. What are we going to do as a staff to maximize that, and then and then the rest will work itself out. And you know we had great success last year because of it. So, yeah. <clears throat> um. And when you're talking about looking for those jobs, I think something that I wanted to get on here and talk about is there's a lot of coaches out there. I mean, I had assistants do it when I was coaching that they might be searching for other stuff like we all are. It's fine. It's it's OK. But if you don't communicate that with your head coach, I think that's wrong. I think yeah. that's something I think that's something that the transparency side of things in this sport um, is huge. I think it, it it really helps you helps you build that bond with your head coach. Um, like if you get opportunity, you just communicate. Like, hey, what's you know what's a, he's not going to be mad at you. If he is, then you probably don't need to be coaching him. Correct, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's 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 the name of the game. So, I mean, I always I wanted my guys to. I told them that when I hired them, like, hey, if you're gonna look for other jobs, just. Let put me as your number one reference. Yeah. So put me as your number one reference. I want to make sure that I can I can help you out. Um. So so like, if if there's something were to come forward for me going forward, I'm gonna go to Coach Martin. I'm gonna let him know. Like this is the situation. This is where I'm at with it. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware. But I think that a lot of times that that kind of gets gets overshadowed in today's game. You know, it's it's there's so many, like I said before, there's so many opportunities out there. Um, that some people just they they get too caught up in that instead of just focusing on you know where you are communicating staying on the same page with everybody and and in the end they're gonna they they're gonna want that for you yeah but if you if you're sneaking behind their back and he's getting reference calls like hold on now wait wait what I'm losing my coordinator I didn't didn't know about this it's uh it it really help, it loses trust um I think it, it it doesn't it doesn't help in that aspect at all. But I think on the other side of it, if you're communicating that, I think it builds that trust. It builds that trust with the head coach to where like, okay, we're on the same page. I know he's got opportunities, but as long as I know what's going on, you know, we're all good. Um, <clears throat> but I, I'm I'm proud, proud to be here, man. I'm telling you, it's it's you know, I've I heard the rumors for years about you know, coming to Georgia, and I was always the guy like, oh, no, nah, man, Florida's the best. And it is. I love Florida. Love it. But um, making making the best situation for your family is important, man. It's important. Yeah. It matters. I mean, you say what you want, but, hey, we all want to make more money doing what we love, right? I mean, you know, my dad raised me that, you know, you never want to work a day in your life. Find something that, find something that, that you love doing that you don't feel like you're going to work. And I, I do that every day, man. I'm blessed. I come here and, and I get to get to teach PE and I get to coach football and there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. I get to have my family around the facility whenever I need or whenever I want. Um, there's not many jobs out there that you can do that. But um, I think Toombs County is, you know, I've tried to really support, get involved um, in the community. And I think that's that's big as well. No matter your coordinator, head coach, want to be a head coach because people see that you know yeah people see that when you're you know support the other sports man encourage your kids to play other sports you know we're a smaller school here we only got you know 900 kids we were 2a last year um, they actually reclassed georgia and they bumped us down to 1a this year so 
we feel pretty good about our shot shot at it. <laughs> um it's you know we got probably 85 percent of our 90 percent of our kids play two sports yeah probably 25 percent of them play three sports um and i think that's huge and supporting those kids and doing that um it's 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 huge to 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 show your face just me and my wife went to the soccer game last friday you know just Brought the kids out, sat there and watched watched our soccer team continue their dominance. And it's just been it's been real fun to to dive in and, and support. When I was in Florida, it was kind of hard, man. I was commuting and you know, I was driving 45 minutes each way. It was kind of hard to dive into that. But being here, it's like it's it's good. It's I yeah. think it's huge. It's huge to just show your face, be around, um, let them know that you care, you know, and that's you you you'll never know what a kid kid can do for you if if he doesn't know you care. That's yeah. just that's just what it is. Um, so I think that's huge. And I just put a quote on there from Kobe Bryant. Man, it's he's it's that's my guy. Um, my daughter's name is Kobe. If that tells you anything. <laughs> <laughs> Spelled it different though. So yeah, um, it's a constant quest to be better today than you were yesterday, and better tomorrow than you were the day before. And it sounds so commonplace when you say it, right? sounds so so basic but it's it's just if you focus and live life like that you're gonna you're gonna accomplish a lot of things and accomplish a lot of things yeah no doubt and i think those are a lot of good points about being where you are and and not always being on that quest to be a head coach and uh, you know coach i was that guy i wanted to be a head coach so bad matt can tell you and i was up front with him was like matt i'm applying for this job i'm applying for that job i'm applying for this and it took me a while to get it and I'm one of those guys, I'll tell you right now, I, I never want to be a head coach ever again. It's not interested in it. It I can do it. I'm capable of it. But I want to be an X's and O's football guy. Yep. I do not want to be worrying about knee pads or Johnny who forgot his helmet on the bus or whatever. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to coach football. I want to be close to my defensive guys. I want to draw up really good scheme. I want to encourage them to be a part of their lives. And I want to be done at that point. And, and I'll go do laundry. I'll do any of that other crap that you, that you want me to do, but I don't want to be a head coach ever again. So yeah. I, I think that people on that quest find out a lot about themselves and what they really want to do. And you know what? I always would have told you I, I want to be a head coach and that was my destiny. And now it didn't matter. I mean, if I'm in the, you know, I won't be, but if I got hired in the NFL tomorrow, I, I don't want to be a head coach. I'd love to be a DC, but keep me away from that head coaching spot. Yeah. Yeah. It is nice. It is nice. to just, <laughs> Just focus on the X's and O's and, and look at the best 11 you can get out there and, and meet with your defensive staff. And it's just more about ball. I was watching uh, Pat McAfee's show um, last week, two weeks ago. Um, I really enjoy that that show, that podcast and the show. But uh, they had um, Chip Kelly on there. And, yeah. Uh, they were like, Chip, what the heck, man? You, you know, you're head coach at UCLA, you've been the head coach in the NFL, and then you leave to be a coordinator. And he's like, I miss ball. Yeah. He said, I, he said, I just miss ball. He said, I haven't. He said he had not been in a meeting room, like a actual run, a coordinated a meeting room since 2008. And when I heard that, I'm thinking to myself, man, like that, that it's, you don't think about it that way, but you're, you're not in the meetings. You know, you're, yeah. you'll pop your head in like, hey, uh, Everything going on good. You're basically just in there to check to see if your coaches are doing what you want them to do. Yeah. You know That's really all. You're you're just kind of managing the the whole the whole thing the whole thing. That's why I think baseball has it right when they call their head coaches managers because that that's what you are. That's what yeah. you are. That's what you are. Yeah. Too. A lot of it's not ball. It's it's getting the right people in the building, trusting them to do their job, and holding everybody accountable. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot of time and effort. And then you know the, the ball part of it kind of gets put on the back burner, you know. And, but I mean, but like they always say, you never see a, a assistant coach's name in the paper for losing the game either. So <laughs> yeah. it kind of comes kind of works both ways. That's true. Yep. That's true. So, hey, uh, coach, um, you know, you made the transition now, going back to Georgia from Florida. You're back with Coach Martin. And you get there and you talked about a little bit about how everything now is different, you know, being a head coach and now you're, you're an assistant. 
how everything is different now when you have people doing these other jobs. And as a head coach or a manager, you wear a bunch of different hats. You're dealing with parents. You're dealing with issues with kids and stuff. Can you kind of talk about how, and I'm sure for you, because you because you worked with Coach Martin before, that you had a relationship there already, mm-hmm. but how you kind of settled yourself back into that role where you weren't having to deal with all those issues at a time, but maybe you wanted to, or your natural reaction now became to, hey, I need to, to jump out and handle this, and how, how you kind of handled that as an assistant. I think it's, it, it really goes to like, to just knowing your, knowing your role on the team, right? Know, knowing what your job is to, to, for the best, the best version of me for this team. What, 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 what am I going to do? Do I need to, am I the guy that does laundry? Am I the guy that paints the practice field? Am I the guy that picks up kids? And, and we all do a little bit of all of that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what makes us good here is we got selfless guys that are willing to, to do whatever it takes, do whatever it takes. And for me, I'm just a worker, man. Like, that's just who I am. I love it. I love ball. I love, you know, being around the kids. I, you know, I'm dapping kids up every day when they come in. I try to shake every kid's hand every day in, in fourth block. Like, that's just, to me, that's, like I said, that dash when you die. Like, to me, that's the stuff that matters more than any win or loss record. Um, I think that it, it matters and it makes a big difference. So for me, the transition was from the, like, I did feel like I need to be doing something. Like, I was like, man, I got, I need to be like, what, what can I do? What, what, what do you need yeah. to do? First? Like, what? And, but then it, it kind of, I also was, you know, trying to take Coach Martin's defense that he's been running for the last seven years. He's been really good at it here. He's, he's one of the best around. I wasn't kind of trying to come in and reinvent the wheel. So that wasn't something that was necessarily easy transition either because you're taking over the head coach's job, essentially, right? Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate it. And I, you know, I always tell him this, that, you know, I appreciate him calling me because I know that not everybody could take that job. You know, you have to kind of put your pride to the side and say, teach me, teach yeah. me. And that's something I had to do. Um, I thought, I tell him all the time, I thought I knew defense until I came here, until I came here. Coach Martin, is, is he's good at what he does, man. He, he knows that stuff. <laughs> he's, he's good. The details of defense, I just, I wasn't, I was an offensive guy, man. That's who I was. I was power read, baby, let's get it. You know, that's, <laughs> I was I was finding a way, drawing on plays, and then I realized I was drawing them upside down the whole time, man. So you I were. To, you I were. To, that's I good. Had to, had to change the whole, the whole mindset. But um, I think in today's game, you're seeing more, offensive coaches go to the defensive side. Um, and I think part of that is the evolution of our game. Um, you're seeing, I mean, other than us, we see wing T or, or double tight, something weird every week because we're yeah. small ball in South Georgia. But in Florida, you're seeing everything, you know, it's five wide, slot open, trips, bunch, all that. Um, so you, as an, if you're thinking like an offensive guy, it's, it's a lot easier to slow things down. I mean, I'm blessed, you know, my outside linebacker coach, Nick Hayes, he was a offensive coordinator also in South Georgia. So he hadn't coached defense really. So we, we kind of came over and we kind of pieced it together and with coach Martin. And so the, the growth of things kind of took a little bit. I had to, I had to learn. So when you, you asked that question, what was the biggest, you know, thing at first, it was, I had to learn. I had to take a step back and say, I'm, I'm no longer the teacher now. I'm the pupil. Teach me. Um, and that that was hard for me at, at times. It was hard because I hadn't I hadn't been I've been just hey this is what we're doing, you know that's I don't like that. Let, let's let's try this. You know what I mean? Explain to me why mm-hmm. you want to do that. Uh, you know, let's try this. It's just kind of where you know as a head coach, like we talked about, it's kind of you're you're managing things. What's what's best for the overall team? But now I'm learning gaps and techniques and specifics of just defensive stuff that I had never learned before. Yeah, I've been a secondary guy. I I, was, I coached secondary for him back in fourteen and fifteen. Um, I, I I love my DBs. I'm a big time DB guy. But the box, I was I knew it. I knew the gaps. I knew my assignments. <laughs> I knew my techniques. I knew all that, but I not the details of it. Right? Not the yeah. not the he pulls who's packing who's you know like that's the stuff where I was like wait what? <laughs> it took me just a little bit to kind of kind of learn all those details and I'm still learning 
you know, we're, and now we're, you know, we kind of took my secondary stuff, combined it with, with what he was doing up front. And, you know, we had a lot of success. But I think the overall was just taking a step back and knowing your role. I think that's big. Understanding what you what what is expected of you on this team for it to be successful. And uh, yeah, and I think that's a big piece to it. And coach, I'm just glad to hear that there's some offensive coaches seeing the light and and coming to the correct side of the football and and, and coaching real ball. Yeah. Um, because as Matt knows, that re- real ball is coached on the defense. All right, you know the guys. Every day that are just out there grinding. So offensive, <laughs> offensive easy. Uh, I I got another question, Coach. And uh, along the same line, you know, you talked about knowing your role. Um, you know, at some point you have been a head coach and you had success. So I'd imagine at some point there's something that happens that maybe you don't agree with that's going on with the head coach. Not saying it happened or will mm-hmm. happen. But for those coaches out there that maybe they've had disagreements with the head coach mentally, like, I think we should do it this way, what would be the best way in your mind to approach that uh, with your head coach? Number one thing is be loyal no matter what. Be loyal no matter what. If your coach says go roll in that ditch, go roll in the ditch. And then when everybody leaves, you sit down and you say, hey, coach, what was, why did we roll in the ditch? You know? <laughs> just wondering like and i think that's the curiosity you don't want to take that away right yeah Um, i think it's important that as an assistant coach that you ask questions um and try not to just sit back on your hands and um just be a yes man i don't you don't get a a staff full of yes men don't win they don't Um, you a staff that challenges each other respectfully wins and I, i tell you if you look at the division one level you look in the nfl if you don't think those guys are challenging each other every day, you're crazy because they got millions of dollars in their livelihood all the time. Yeah. So everything is 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 pushed to the limit. Um, so it, understanding that, and um, I think, but loyalty is the number one thing as an assistant coach. Um, if if you're out there and, and you don't necessarily agree with what's going on with your head coach, man, no matter you're you're under him, right? Your job relies on on how you do your job. So if, if you're sitting there t- talking behind his back, you're not doing your job to the highest of, of your ability. So being loyal to your, to your head coach, I think, is the most important part. And just understanding that win, lose, or draw, y'all are going down together or you're going up together. But you're together no matter what. They're not going to say Toombs County and Jeff Smothers. It's going to be the Toombs County Bulldogs. So, yeah. so being loyal to the head coach, I think, is, is huge. All right. Matt, you good there? We'll move on to his next sheet here. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Perfect. All right, so when we talk about kind of what we were just saying, the, the leadership umbrella, that's, a, that's what I call it. It's it's kind of like, okay, you got you got your head coach, right? Then you got your coordinators. Then you got your – so a defensive coordinator, you got your outside linebackers, your inside backers, your D-line, your – whoever, assistant, secondary, whatever you've got going on, however many staff members you have, that's your, that's kind of under your umbrella. Offense, you've got quarterbacks, running backs, O-line receivers, slot receivers, however many coaches you've got. They're under that umbrella. So you've got kind of these two, but the overall umbrella is the head coach. And that goes back to what we were just saying. You you know, in the end, whatever he says goes. That's, that's part of being the, the big man. That's part of being the, the guy that makes the big bucks. So I tell Coach Martin all the time when he has to make he's got those busy days. I say that's why you make the big bucks. But <laughs> I think it's that that's the part of the managing that makes it so so difficult as a head coach because you are the the overall leader of of all that. But for me, my job is to lead my group, and my group starts with my secondary. I coach the secondary, and I'm the defensive coordinator. So I my job is I got to make sure my group is ready to go. Right? Yeah. I can't I can't go out to practice and the DBs look lost. They can't get in the stance. They're not checking the motion. They're not, you know, we're blitzing and they're playing off. Like we're like we're just not on the same page. That's that's directly reflected on me. So from a from a secondary standpoint, I gotta have my guys charged up, ready to go to practice and know what they're doing to execute. Same thing with the linebacker coach, same thing with the D line coach. Those guys have to have those guys ready. 
So I think it's it's important to make sure that leading your group, no matter it, even according if you're a coordinator out there, I think it's huge. Don't don't get caught up in just I'm the DC, right? I'm I'm if you're a DB guy, if you're coaching DBs, coach your DB, coach. And that's what I love about Nick Saban. Nick Saban's the goat, been around forever, did his thing, and you know where he was every day at practice. By the DBs. By the DBs. And he had a great relationship with all those guys because that's his baby. That's he, he took pride in that. And that's the biggest name in college football, you know? Um, so I think if that, should t- if that tells you anything, it's, it shows how important that role is. Um, so, you know, leading that group with, with, to the best of your ability is, is the number one thing you can do to be committed and loyal to your coach and showing that you, you're doing your part. So – Leading, leading that group is huge. I think that, you know, bettering the team is something that as a coordinator, you have to, you have to try to, you have to try to ask questions, <clears throat> not necessarily from a selfish aspect, if that makes sense. Like I, I, if I'm asking my head coach, Hey, what can, what can I do to better the team? It's going to be, what can, what can me and the defensive staff do to better the team? It's, yeah. you know, in the end, it's we, not me. I, I'm not like if if you ever heard any interview or if, if I've ever talked about my football teams in the past, it's 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 always been. It's been one of those things where it's it's us, 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 us. It's we, 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 we. You got to it's got to you've got to have that that built in belief that it is we over me and that we are going to do this together. And I think that leading your group is something that that kind of starts that whole thing. It starts the whole thing. It makes life easy for everybody else. <clears throat> and it, it, it helps you ask those questions. Like, what can we do to be better? I, I all last summer, I felt like I was doing a horrible job, horrible job. Cause I was, I was still trying to learn. I was still trying to grasp my, what my role was. So for me, he probably got tired of me asking that question. Like, <laughs> what am I do, are we doing things right defensively? Like, how did you do things? You know, like, what, what were you doing in these aspects? Um, so so just asking the head coach what you can do to better the team isn't necessarily a selfish question. It's what can your group, how can you help the group with the with the team success, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, and I think the, the most obvious thing to me is, is just being a good assistant coach, being a good coach, period, is being on time and being present. To me, the, the number one thing, like I will, I would never, like, I never had to deal with it, but I, I couldn't. I could not deal with an assistant coach not being to practice on time. Like, you're you're not always going to have those guys. You're Sometimes you'll have guys, you know, practice gets out, like, they, they're out, especially in Florida. You know, community. Yeah. Guys, you, they're, they're not getting paid nothing. I get it. But when you're here, I need everything from you. I need all you got. From the second you walk in the door, so the time you walk out, I need to make sure you're you're here, you're locked in, and you're 10 minutes early for everything we do. Um, you know, 10 minutes early is on time, right? That's just that's how that's how we operate. <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy here in the summer, man. Last year, testament to our success. You know, we do a men of summer thing. Um, if they if they make it every day throughout the summer workouts, um, they get their jersey on the back and they get a picture put up on the wall. Uh, men of summer we we started that last year and man we had i think like 40 something guys that were here every single day like wow. every single day and and i never had that kind of never had it might have been more than that honestly it might be in the 50s like it was it was to me it, it blew my mind but guess what if it was 752 and we hadn't heard from them guess what those coaches are doing calling their position group if you're in my position group hey johnny's not here today oh calling him up or driving to his house for getting him up out of his bed. We're throwing him in our car and we're going back to the <laughs> that's, But that's the kind of level of commitment it takes. So as a coach, you know, if, if I'm a player and I know my coach is going to come get me out of bed, whether I want to go or not, I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I know it, it's coming anyway. So as an assistant coach, if you're just willing to do that and be on time and be present, <clears throat> I think it goes a long way. Um, with creating those relationships with not only the players, but the coaches as well. It really, it really kind of puts you all together. Like nobody's special here. 
right? We're all here every day. It's it's not a it's not a an option. It's an expectation. Like we're we're here every day and we're coming to work. Um, and so building those relationships uh, with coaches and players as an assistant, I think, and that's the biggest. Outside of obviously giving up points, I don't. I don't want to give up points because that's that's an easy way to lose my job. But outside <laughs> of that, the relationship with the with the players, that's my that's why I do this. Um, and 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 having that relationship with the coaches, it just it makes it makes it fun coming to work every day. It makes it fun coming to work every day. And to me, I don't ever want to work a day in my life. And and coming to a place like this and being around guys like this, it really made me realize, like, man. What does a title? What does a title mean? You know, what is what is being a coordinator? What what is that? What is being an assistant head coach? What it doesn't matter. In the end, it's about the relationships, about the coaches, um, and we kind of talked about the why questions a little bit already. But I think in the staff meetings, when you're all together, um, you know, we meet once a week um, in the summers, kind of on Mondays. We when we cut it down, we work out three days a week. Um, yeah. The yeah. So we go Tuesday, thir- Tuesday through Thursday, and then Mondays we come in as coaches and kind of plan out our week. Um, that's kind of how we do it. But I think it's important as a as an assistant to ask questions. Um, I'm I I had to get better at that this year because when I first got here, I was kind of like the new guy. I was like, man, I I'm not really trying to ruffle any feathers. I'm not really trying to stand on the table for things. But it like I said before, it doesn't make you a better team. It doesn't make your staff better if you're not if you're not challenging those guys and saying, "Hey, what? Why are we? Why are we practicing this first? Why not do this?" Yeah. Um, now I think that's something that, as an assistant coach, don't be afraid to do that. Um, don't be afraid. But there's also some guys, you know, they don't like that. You know, there's there's a lot of head coaches out there like that. They don't necessarily like being challenged. I guess would be the word. Um, but at the same time, if you're in a place like that, maybe that's not the place for you, right? I mean, that goes back to what I was saying earlier about being where your feet are and finding the best situation to succeed and the best, best place that's going to help you grow as a coach. And if you're not in a place where you can have those open discussions in the staff meeting, then, you know, it's not, it's not healthy. I think it's huge to have the opportunity and, and not be afraid to communicate that with your other coaches. Um, and obviously always be prepared, man. We, we've talked about that already. I think if you're not prepared, you know, that's, that's the two thirds of this job is just, just being prepared, you know, having the film ready, having the, having practice schedules ready, making sure your guys are prepared. You know, you don't have to get knee pads or girdles as an assistant, but I better have a practice script and my, my cards, we still draw out the cards old school. We got the big old, <laughs> you know big old cards and do all that. But it's, if you're not prepared, then, you know, what's that, what's that tell your kids, right? That, that tells your kids that, man, the coach don't care about this. Why should I take this serious? Um, so I think it's huge. And then the last thing that I think for any coach out there, whether you're an assistant head coach, striving to be a coach, you have to be able to take criticism. You have to, you, if not, do not be a coach. <laughs> we, we know this. You you man, you could be up thirty-one to nothing, and they break a long run. And wow, oh, what are you doing? Why is that? Nobody, you know, can't stop the run. Like it's just, it's one of those things where if you can't take criticism, you're in the wrong profession. Um, but embrace it, embrace it, and don't always look at it as personal, right? <laughs> yeah, there's right now. It sounds like they're attacking you because you gave up a long run, but take it as you're right. We did just, I got to fix that. What, do, what can I do to fix that problem? Instead of taking it personal, take it as my job. My job is to, there's a problem, we got to fix it. Uh, and in the end, it, it goes down to what old Bill, old Bill Belichick. I'm a Steelers fan, but still got respect for, for him. Uh, do your job, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Just do your job, man. It's, it's a real simple concept, but it's, it's the hardest concept to grasp sometimes. Just do your job. <laughs> no coach i think those are some great points when it talks to transitioning to being a coordinator and, and going through that and taking criticism is obviously a big piece i i know i've 
taking it well and not so well sometimes. But, you know, one thing that I learned throughout my career is how to take criticism and, and sometimes how to take just getting ripped to shreds, whether it's your fault or not, because we've That's all been there, whether it's, it, you know, you're an assistant coach or some other role and somebody's just ripping you apart. Yeah. And you're like, man, I didn't have anything to do with this. Like, yeah. I, I'm not even sure why I'm getting yelled at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know we've all been there. You know, I have a funny story always that uh, I was at Florida State as a recruiting assistant and I'm walking by before practice. We wear khakis to practice. We're mm -hmm. clearly not a GA. They're all in shorts and everything. <laughs> and, um, and I don't mind using this story and I don't mind using the coach's name, but I walked by a drill. It's Sal Sinceri, who's the DN's coach. And he's like, why is my drill not set up? Just, I mean, just starts ripping me. So I just stand there and just stare at him and um, wait for him to go off. He's done with it. I'm like, coach, if you will tell me what drill it is and how in the world to set it up, I will go set it up for you right now. And I was like, but I work in recruiting and I have no idea what drill this is. <laughs> and he kind of looked at me and he's like, grab those codes and put them here. I was like, you got it. <laughs> but, it, and you know, later on he, he called me into his office and he was like, Hey man, you know, I appreciate the fact that, you know, you didn't get all upset and you didn't, you know, you just kind of looked at me and was like, coach, what do you want me to do? And I'll go do it. And so that's one where it worked out for me not to have a big reaction, but just more like, Hey coach, I got no problem doing it. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to uh, fix it. I want to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And that was the the thing, right? Like coach, I don't know how to do this, but I will go find the answer. Or if you'll tell me the answer, I will go do it right now. So it's a, always a fun story that I like to share with people. I'm like, look, there, there was no business yelling at me. I had nothing to do. I've never set up a drill in the college realm in my life. Not, not once. Yeah. And so it caught me off guard, but no, I think those are some great pieces, Matt. Um, anything to add for that? No, I, I think that's a great perspective, um, you know, and, and we've both been there going from head coach to coordinator, and uh, yeah. it, it does it does present challenges because, you know, you kind of want to do things, you get used to doing things your own way and making your own decisions, and now, you know, you got to realize you're, you, you have a whole program around you that has been built not on your decisions, and you got you to gotta put your ego to the side and uh, and fall into exactly what the the basis and the core of your program is and uh and and go by the book there for what your head coach is doing um you know coach said something uh i thought was great was enjoy the process you know he was talking about yeah. Yeah, trust the process but he said enjoy the process there and i think too many times we uh you know it, you get the young coaches that that want to come up and make their way up and um they they don't enjoy what's going on where they're at and they don't realize what's around them. And they're, they're always looking to, to, to jump to the greener pastures without realizing that, that they're, they're in a great spot for themselves. So I, I think that's very important. Yeah. yeah. And part of it's just humility and everything with young guys. And I didn't have any, so I'm not sitting here acting like I'm trying to preach to people, but I mean, I was right there, right? I wasn't, wasn't as humble and thought I knew everything. And, you know, as I get older, I look back, I'm 38 now. And I was like, man, I didn't know shit. Like, what was I even like, why was I wanting to be a heck? Of, like, I didn't know enough. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't yeah. have been pressing that. I shouldn't have been doing this. And so, you know, if you, if you got some humility out there and you want to listen to somebody who's definitely put his foot in his mouth plenty of times, like just take your time and, and really learn the game and, and learn, you know, ask a coach, if you can sit in certain meetings, you know, at, you know, sit in a parent meeting, sit in other things like that, that you'll never experience if you're trying to be a head coach. And then as you're coming down, ask the head coach, if you can help him with any of that stuff, that's driving him nuts, right? He's got yeah. 10 parent meetings or he's got this meeting he's got to have or anything like coach, can I help you out with any of that? Obviously I have experience with it. You know, he, he may tell you, yeah, man, I, you know, you, you do, you have enough experience, you know, go take this meeting with this parent. And uh, you know, then if it, if it's got to come back to me, then go, you know, so be it. But you know, those are, those are all things that you can do to help out that you really don't think about until you've done it. Right. I would have never thought about asking a head coach if I can help him out with parent meetings or, or anything of that nature meetings with teachers and stuff like that. And then when I came back, I was like, Hey, you know, my head coach at the time, his name was Frank. It's like, Frank, do you need help with this stuff? Do you need help with that? Like I got experience. Now. I feel like I can handle a little bit of that. So yeah. um, all aspects that you can add, I think they're great points. That goes back to the trust, right? I mean, if you, you know, you have that trust with your coach and, and he believes in you, he's going to give you those opportunities because it's going to take something off his plate. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, if you're not doing all the other things we talked about doing the little things, he's not going to, 
I'm not going to put you in that position, right? But I think that if you're if you're willing to to do the hard the hard stuff, the day to day stuff, the always being on time, the always bringing your best, the always bringing the energy, um, always running the meeting rooms, like if if he's got a lot on his plate, heck yeah, he's going to pass that off. I've been there. I've been there. It's 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 nice to have somebody that that you can trust and you can lean on and and kind of help with help with all the things you've got going on. Yeah, I I wish I had former head coaches when I was a head coach. I'm not gonna lie to you. I I needed someone there that I you know you don't even call it a mentor, but someone that can just hey coach, you know, think about this while you're doing that or something like that. I used to call Matt like every day, right, Matt? Yep. I mean, I got Matt to come down to a practice to help us out once. I was like, Matt, I need you to drive down here um, or up here. I was in St. Augustine, yeah. and so it's you know that reach out and that camaraderie but you know he was a guy i trusted and i had a few guys i didn't know and they were just position coaches and i was like man i need some help here i just i need to feel like there's another set of eyes on it tell me i'm doing it the right way tell me if i'm not doing this right and all that so it's a, it's a great point um yep. so hey we're gonna cut it off here we're gonna make this part one because uh, we're gonna get into a little bit of football coach here uh, so real quick, as we sign off, um, just like we always tell you, if you're interested in any coach or any uh, questions for coach or any questions for us, you can reach out to us at the Bordrell podcast at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter at Bordrell pod. We're also on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. I try to hit every social media possible. Um, so if you got any questions, reach out to us. And again, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. It helps us drive our channel. And uh, hopefully we can keep going north of that number and, and hit our, our goals. So um coach thanks for being here tonight obviously we're going to pick up on part two with you here in a minute but thanks for coming on we really appreciate it i love this topic because i think it's something people don't talk about almost ever in football and so thank you for coming on tonight and uh spending some time with us appreciate you guys man like i said keep keep doing your thing keep advancing the game love it absolutely all right have a great night 